Hey everybody, today we're going to sit here in front of my 125 gallon native tank and we're going to talk about the nitrogen cycle and in fact we're actually going to feed the tank so we've got a little bit of something interesting to look at while we chat about it and what we're going to talk about with the nitrogen cycle is the part of the nitrogen cycle that is seldom discussed in the aquarium hobby if you go outside the aquarium hobby and you ask say a geologist or anybody in the earth sciences what the nitrogen cycle is they won't talk about the ammonia to nitrate part of the nitrogen cycle that's only a portion of the full cycle the full cycle starts with nitrogen in our atmosphere and it undergoes the process of being converted into organic materials and those organic materials get used for other things so in a nutshell we can just call that organic material fish food and once that nitrogen gas has been converted into these organic materials it then gets converted into fish food or what have you and it gets broken down into the portion of the nitrogen cycle that we know the ammonia gets broken down into nitrite and nitrite gets broken down into nitrate and then that's where we kind of stop talking about it in the aquarium hobby but the actual cycle continues on remember it's not a cycle until it comes all the way back to where it started so there's actually a denitrification process. The first process is the nitrification process where it turns the ammonia and the organic materials into nitrates. That's nitrification. And then the denitrification is where those nitrates are then broken back down and converted into nitrite. That nitrite is then broken down and converted into nitrogen gas, which is then released back into the atmosphere. And then the full nitrogen cycle is complete and the nitrogen gas is free to start becoming organic compounds again and the cycle goes around and around and around. So in the aquarium hobby we only really talk about this segment of the nitrogen cycle that really directly impacts us but there are ways you can set your aquarium up to have the complete nitrogen cycle, well, maybe not with the atmospheric gas and everything, but with the food all the way back around and have it be released as nitrogen gas again. You can do that. But if you're wondering why we don't do that, because that sounds like a pretty, you know, snazzy thing to do, if we can just set our aquariums up with like a second filter on it or put some kind of different biomedia in there or something and then just not have nitrates in our aquarium anymore, why don't we do that? Why doesn't everybody do that? And there's a good reason we don't do that. And the reason is that it takes much longer for the denitrification process to happen than the nitrification process. The nitrification process happens in what we can think of as real time. Um, if you've got even a heavily um, overstocked tank, if you've got enough biomedia in there, you can deal with the ammonia as it's being produced. And that ammonia will never build up. It'll get converted into nitrates so rapidly that your nitrates will build up very quickly, but you can have a really heavily stocked tank and not have ammonia build up or nitrate build up because that nitrification process uses oxygen and it's a very energetic process by comparison and it happens very quickly. The other thing is the water gets moved through that biomaterial very quickly because it's oxygenated water. And that's the key difference is the denitrifying bacteria is anaerobic bacteria. It's bacteria that cannot live in an oxygen rich environment. In fact, the way aerobic bacteria works is it uses the oxygen and it oxidizes the ammonia and it oxidizes the nitrites and that's where it gets its energy from the oxygen. When we're looking at the anaerobic bacteria that does the denitrifying process, that uses the nitrates as an energy source instead of the oxygen. So it's not necessarily that that process takes longer, but what takes longer is you have to have oxygen depleted water. And the way you get oxygen depleted water to this nitrifying or denitrifying bacteria is you have to have either a really deep gravel bed or a sand bed or you've got to have a particular type of biomedia that is porous yet very dense. And the idea is the water will move through this medium very slowly. And as it starts moving through the medium, 
it will first encounter the bacteria that we all know and love, the aerobic bacteria that will be using the oxygen and breaking the ammonia down, breaking the nitrates down, and it'll be using that oxygen up in the process of doing that. So as the water moves deeper into this medium, it has less and less oxygen because it's being used by the aerobic bacteria. So only once we get deep down inside this material do we get to oxygen poor enough conditions that the bacteria can survive and then it begins feeding on the nitrates which are converted into nitrites and the nitrites are then converted into nitrogen gas which is dissolved into the water and then in the same way you know excess CO2 or whatever just off gases out of your tank then the, the uh, excess uh, nitrogen gas does the same thing. But that process of moving that water through that medium has to be slow by nature. If it goes quickly it's going to have oxygen in it, and it's just not going to work. So it has to go through there slowly. I'm not an expert on this by any means. I looked into this when I first started keeping fish, and I learned just enough about it to know that it wasn't something I was interested in, and I've never really paid much attention to it since. So I probably got a detail or two wrong here or there. I may have missed something. There may be some way that you can set an aquarium up to make it much more um, practical. But for the most part, if you're going to set an aquarium up to have denitrifying bacteria and the whole denitrifying process going on, then that's something you, it's a specialty tank. It's something you have to set up to be operated like that. You have to have the right kind of medium. You have to have either a nice deep gravel bed or a sand bed or a dirted tank. Um, you've got to have lots of plants in there. And most importantly, you got to go real easy on the nitrates. You know, you can't put tons of fish food and have a heavily stocked tank because the denitrification process simply can't keep up with the nitrification process unless you start adding elaborate nitrogen reactors or sumps or, or something like that. And then you'd have to more or less double or even triple the size of the volume of the tank just to have enough surface area to slowly move all this water through it and denitrify it and do a water change. That's as simple as it is. If you've got a tank like mine, and the way most people keep their fish tanks, just do a water change and your nitrates are gone. If you need to bring your nitrates down, then the water change is the way to go. And that's what I found out very early on, because very early on, I was you know, deathly afraid of nitrates. Everybody told me my fish were gonna die if they got over 40 parts per million. And so I was looking for ways to reduce them and I discovered this magic process by which you can just denitrify your aquarium. But I found out it's not so simple. And it's obviously not so simple because if it was, everybody would be doing it. Uh, in fact, if it, at, you know, if it was that simple, then that's how we would all do our fish tanks. Um, you know, when you go to those beginner guides that say how to set up your first fish tank, it never mentions denitrifying bacteria. Nothing ever does. Every time you read about the nitrogen cycle or you go about, you know, how to cycle my aquarium, you're not going to see anything about the denitrifying process because that's a specialty thing. Doesn't mean it's super complicated. Doesn't mean it's difficult to do. It just means it's a specialty thing. You've got to set the tank up to function like that. It's got to have the right kind of substrate and it's got to have the right kind of biomaterial. You got to have the right kind of stocking density and you have to go into it with that in mind. And if that's what you're into, then that's fantastic. It's a really neat thing. Um, you can actually do it to make a tank. It's challenging, but you can make a tank that's fully self-sustaining. I've seen ecosystems in bottles before that have been sealed shut for years and have shrimp and stuff living in them that are feeding off of the plants that grow and it all just, you know, it's this completely self-contained ecosystem. So that kind of stuff certainly can be done. But if you're going to set up a tank like mine, and like most people do with your standard stocking density and your normal amount of fish because you just enjoy keeping fish and you're doing water changes even if it's not on a super regular interval, if you're just doing normal water changes, then that's, you know, this denitrifying process really just isn't something that's going to be much of a benefit to you. And I'll put it this way. If you've got high nitrates in your tank and you're looking around on the internet and you're asking questions about how do I bring my nitrates down? I can't get my nitrates under 80 parts per million or something like that. If the denitrifying thing was an option, again, you'd see this come up, but you don't. The first thing you're always going to see is the three basics. Um, do more frequent water changes, reduce the amount of food you put in the tank, and reduce your stocking density. Those are going to be the three things to bring your nitrates down immediately. More frequent water changes, less food, less fish. The next stuff you're going to see is 
using nitrosorb or you know putting some kind of chemical additive in there putting some kind of ion exchange medium uh, in your meat in your uh, filter um, like purigen or something like that that'll actually specifically pull the nitrates out of your water you see all that kind of stuff long before you're ever going to get to see the denitrifying stuff and that's simply because it's such a slow process that if I were to put some material in this tank you know, so, some some uh, biomedia that could deal with the right kind of conditions and all that. And I was getting some denitrification happening in this tank. Over the course of a whole week, I'm going to come in and do a water change on Saturday anyway, and boom, you know, it's just done. What's the point of having all of the denitrification process? It's just added layers of complexity to my fish tank when I'm simply going to do a water change. And, you know, so again, if that's how you've got your tank set up and that's how you want to have your tank set up, and you've done it that way from the beginning, and you've got the right kind of substrate and everything, that's a neat project to do, but that's a specialty tank. If you've got fish tanks like mine, normal, regular, run-of-the-mill, everyday fish tanks, and you've got high nitrate problems and stuff like that, just do more frequent water changes. You know, feed a little bit less. Maybe if some of your fish die off, maybe don't be so quick to restock your tank and get it back up to that full stock. These are going to be the simple things you need to do uh, just to bring your nitrates down. And then, of course, you can go to, you know, using the additives or putting the purigen in your filter or something like that if you're really that worried about it or whatever. But again, for me, just do slightly more frequent water changes or feed a little bit less, and you're going to have less nitrates in your tank. But I did want to go over that whole full nitrogen cycle. It was pointed out the other day when I mentioned the nitrogen cycle that I didn't talk about the whole nitrogen cycle. So now we have a complete knowledge of the nitrogen cycle. But again, as that full process applies to us in the aquarium hobby, unless you're running some sort of specialty tank where you're specifically doing that thing, then the bulk of the nitrogen cycle doesn't really apply to us. It's sort of the fish food ammonia to nitrate part of it that we need to worry about. And then you do your water changes and you stop worrying about it. Don't bother with all of the denitrifying uh, bacteria and all that kind of stuff. It's just not worth it uh, in an everyday sort of basis. So that's my two cents. I'm sure, like I said, I missed some stuff or omitted some stuff and I failed to talk about how awesome these kinds of tanks are and so on and so forth. So go down below, leave me your comments, tell me what I missed, tell me what I got wrong and so on and so forth i'd like to hear from you because if i am missing something and it really is that easy to just have a second filter running um you know and i can just suck all the nitrates out of my tank and turn them into nitrogen gas that would be awesome and i'd love to hear how to do that very easily but so far uh, i've never seen any real reason to worry about doing that but again i'd like to hear your comments down below thanks for watching this one don't forget this one here is my 125 gallon native tank and i'll see you real soon on the next one thanks a lot